Spirit. That really is the sense of, I will step back and let him lead the way, because because we all have come from a mentality where if we want to do something, we have to come up with the means. And awakening just doesn't work that way. You know, we can't just scheme uh, and try to figure out the way to awaken. It's, the, it's that mechanism of figuring out that, that actually has to get washed away. And so uh, I think that that's the thing, even with, um, I would say, with A Course in Miracles, the temptation of having it come as a course with a, a text and a workbook and a manual and it being over 1,200 pages long, is the temptation is to study it and actually believe that you can achieve the goal of the Course through the words. It's a real sneaky one, because it's a, it's a pretty wordy path, really, when you really look at it. And the temptation is to think, ah, oh, if I just hang with this long enough with the words, that the words will get me there. And we all know those things, you know, God knows the prayer of your heart before you utter a word. We have to go way inside, more to purpose and intention, and, and get really clear of that. And then everything else is given. I mean, I, I know I was raised with, the, they call it the Protestant work ethic, where you work hard, you work hard, you just, you know, you just grind it out. You just grind it out and grind it out and grind it out. And then, when I started having these miraculous experiences where everything was given so freely and so easily, that I kind of took that part in the Course, which has come to be nicknamed as the Promise, um, as, as my anthem, you know, as I began traveling. Because I, I thought, ah, oh, it's a lot of words, 1,200 and some pages, but if I could, there's just something that can tickle me and I can carry forth as an anthem. And what you just expressed is like right the core nugget in the middle of the anthem, you know. He will go before you, making straight your path and leading yeah. in your way, no stones to trip on, no obstacle to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you, not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing except the only purpose you would fulfill. That's it. You need take thought for nothing except the only purpose you would fulfill. Talk about undoing everything we've learned in linear time. How we've got to prepare, be ready, make the way. Even with this gazebo going up. I mean, you know, the whole story of it. You know, we had thrown around some ideas and then Lisa and I were driving through Duchesne and we pulled over and we saw this guy on this roof and we were guided to go up there and start talking to him, and he stopped everything and just came <laughs> right off the roof. And we had a, like a five-minute holy encounter, and we didn't know we were talking to the master builder <laughs> of all of the county. This this is like a toothpick structure for him. This guy has built like huge log cabins, massive structures. He gave us a tour shortly after that, and we got to see these messages. This is like a little stick figure thing for him. It's like nothing at all, and yet it came in, and yet the collaboration with all the volunteers here, everybody was feeling the vibe and the joy, you know, yesterday of things just swirling together. Lisa was saying this morning, she couldn't believe, she said, where'd all the scraps of wood go? <laughs> One time I up here, it looked like a mess, and the next minute it's like pristine and ready to go. And more and more, you start to see that that's what letting Him do it through you, or letting, letting the Holy Spirit. Or, there's a great line in the Course, It cannot be difficult to do the task that Christ appointed you to do, because it is He who does it. It can't be any easier than that, <laughs> if you're given a task, and then it is He who does it. Talk about easy. <laughs> That's pretty easy. That's I, I like going around and sharing these thoughts because I don't have a clue of what's coming out. I don't know what the next word's going to be. I'm listening like everybody else, but, but it's fun because you don't... This isn't like Toastmasters where you've got to <laughs> <laughs> your notes. <laughs> so 
They say, it is he who does it. Yeah. <laughs> it is he who does it. You know, you, there's no sense of trying to struggle through it because it, miracles are involuntary when you align with the source. It's like the doer is washed away. And there's nothing more stressful than being identified with the doer. If you're identified with the doer, have I done enough? Did I do it quickly enough? Did I do it well enough? Will I ever be able to do it? You know, you can see it, the timeline is going to, you know, get you snagged in guilt and anxiety. And when you have no sense of, of being the doer, of doing anything, of accomplishing anything, of not accomplishing anything, when you just are freed up from that, that's the true freedom of spirit. That's where we get into being. We, we, we release our mind from all sense of doing. And it's very practical because we simply are done through. It like washes our mind every time we kind of hand over the strings of the marionette uh, to the Holy Spirit and let him, you know, move the crossbow, then, then it feels good, it feels real good. And we can relax into that. Rick's been a good example of that. Rick, since I've known you, Rick, you, you just love to dance and sing and express and and really not interested in metaphysics <laughs> at all. And that's, but the willingness to just dive in and authentically really go for it, like you were sharing in your opening last night, you know. It, it's, that's what creation is, it's ever new. It's not based on something from the past. It's purely new. It's the newness of the moment, untainted by the past. And there's no factor of the future in it either. You're not doing something or expressing something for something in the future. That was part of our old training as well. Where's this going? Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> Where it's going. <laughs> now we thought that, I'm sure as children, we just didn't express that to mom and dad. <laughs> we didn't want the consequences of this. <laughs> What are you going to do with your day? Nothing. <laughs> or better yet, we'll see how it unfolds. <laughs> what about your chores? We'll see if they unfold. <laughs> you know, we would think those thoughts when we were children, we just wouldn't say them. <laughs> but now it's like we're, it's a new day. You know, it's, it's a, new, a new day, a new start. Genevieve was saying, it's a new heart. So, happy day. Ooh, happy day. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it great? I mean, that's our theme. God's will for me is perfect happiness. And we're just like children opening up to that experience. Really. That's the prayer of our hearts. It's like, show me, show me, show me. You know. I've always loved the curiosity of, of children, because to me, curiosity is a, is a reflection of openness. If you're curious, you don't already think you know. If you already think you know everything, why would you have curiosity? And, and to me, that's so important. That's one of those things we cultivate, is just staying curious and open to be shown. Very much like when you're on a walk, a trust walk, you know, and they blindfold you and you put your arms out. And you just trust your guide to take you and show you. I've done a number of those experiential trust walks over the years, and it's just fantastic. Because it's like, you really have to let go of, of what you think you know with the five senses. You're blindfolded, you know, you've got your hand out, and your guide is with you. With every step. Very much like the intuition has to take us into the Kingdom of Heaven through that, just that trusting and that guidance without having to, oh, I read it in a book, or I know the formula to the Kingdom of Heaven. No, it's just an intuitive trust, moment by moment, that's what gets us there. And it works. Yeah. It's joyful. <coughs> it's spontaneous. 